Hey everybody, what is up? It is Dunbar Snackbar here with the second episode of Let's Talk Baseball. Guess what we're going to be doing? Yeah, that's right. We're going to be talking about baseball. I know the title kind of gives it all away. No big surprises here. While uh, we're talking baseball here, in the background, we're going to be having MLB 2K11 playing. I'll be playing as the New York Yankees going up against the Detroit Tigers. I really wanted to play as the Oakland A's for this video here because a lot of this episode is going to be dedicated to what's going on with the A's and the future of them here, but I really did not want to give away all my players, just like they're doing right now to all these other teams. So I thought that uh, this would be kind of interesting because I do believe that the Yankees have the potential to win the AL East, and I think that the Tigers, as it stands right now, will be winning the AL Central. So I think that this is going to be a good matchup between these teams here during the regular season, potentially postseason as well. We'll take a look and see what happens there. Um, and also, too, it is kind of relevant because of what's going on with A-Rod right now. A-Rod, of course, going to Germany to be able to get some treatment for, uh, you know, his knees and, and, and stuff like that, you know, in hopes that it doesn't become an issue during the season. Now, this is kind of a surprise because a lot of people are resting and everything like that, getting ready for spring training to start. And the fact that he's going to Germany, he's doing this experimental treatment to try and help him out, really brings up a giant red flag for me and a lot of other people, too. Because if he's really that concerned about it and he's doing this right now, how bad of a sh how bad a shape is he really? Now, as a Yankees like member of the staff and everything like that, this would be something that I would definitely would be worried about, you know, because obviously he's your starting third baseman. That's not an easy position to be able to fill. And at the same time, you've got six years left on this guy's contract, so that's a lot of time that you're going to be with this guy if he's got, uh, you know. It, or if his body is in bad shape, that's something you're stuck with for a while and you're not going to be able to get rid of pretty easily. Nobody's going to be able to want to pick him up. I mean, somebody probably will, but he's going to be uh, relegated to the DH position and really not able to contribute as much as he would like, and that'll probably affect the way he plays the game. I mean, you obviously play better when you want to play and you're excited to play. And if you kind of know that, yeah, you're starting to get old and you're not in the best shape that you, uh, you know, have been in the past... And your prime is in the past, too. I don't think you're necessarily going to play as well. But we'll take a look and see what happens with that. I think uh, this will be an interesting season for A-Rod. And will really give us insight on what to kind of expect in the future. But a lot of things have kind of taken place since the last episode of Let's Talk Baseball. One of the things, of course, has been the St. Louis Cardinals going out and picking up Carlos Beltran. Now, this, I think, is an awesome move for St. Louis. Now, if you're a Cardinals fan, you still have plenty to be excited about. We've got some friends who are Cardinals fans who seemed absolutely depressed after Albert Pujols left. But the thing was, is I didn't think that the Cardinals were just going to sit by and sulk in the fact that Albert Pujols is not coming back. Let's be frank. You cannot replace Albert Pujols. What he did for the team, for the city, and everything like that, I don't think anybody in baseball today uh, could do. Uh, or has the potential to be able to step in here and do like he did. So going out and picking up Carlos Beltran I think is a great choice because one, he's a great first baseman that I think will be able to help propel the St. Louis Cardinals to some more success down the road. Uh, a postseason bid I'm, I'm going for here. Because I think that the Cardinals are, when you take a look at it right now, are the best team in the NL Central. Uh, I think that you know Prince Fielder will not be coming back to the Brewers. I think what happens with Braun, uh, you know, after the positive test for the performance-enhancing drugs may be something that really, really hurts the Brewers as well. If it, it's found to, uh, you know, that was really what happened and, and the appeal that he made, uh, you know, doesn't come back the way that he would like, there's 50 games he's sitting out. You know, on the flip side, too, for the Cardinals, you've got Adam Wainwright coming back. Adam Wainwright had a, what I would consider a Cy Young award-winning season in 2010. Um, you know, and uh, I think that when he comes back, because last year he was out uh, because of Tommy John surgery, and he didn't get a chance to participate in any games really. And I think that with him coming back, that's going to be a lot of motivation for him to succeed. I mean, his team just did come off of a World Series victory, and I think this kind of goes for everybody though that they kind of want to succeed. But Adam Wainwright, I don't think he'll necessarily be the best for the first half of the season. You know, pitching is not like riding a bike. If you haven't done it for a while, you can't just pick it up and start doing it again. Doing it again. Uh, you know, you really got to work at it to you know, get back to the form that you were in before. So I think that for the first half of the season, maybe the first quarter of the season, he doesn't do too well. 
But the rest of the season, I think he'll do a phenomenal job. And that, uh, in the signing of Carlos Beltran, I think will make up a lot for Albert Pujols leaving. So if you're a Cardinals fan, you have a lot to be excited about. So be excited, I guess is what I'm trying to say here. Now, other things that have been taking place here with baseball and various signings, a lot of it has been revolving around the Oakland A's. And I, don't, I cannot think of any other time that the A's have been in baseball news so much as they have been as of late. Because one of the things that the A's are doing is they are getting rid of everybody. Well, everybody who has really contributed to the team the last year or last couple of years. And let me kind of put this into perspective here, too. With the kind of acquisitions that they are getting and who they are giving away for, the A's are setting themselves up to have the worst season in their history. Many people are expecting them to go to lose more than 100 games. So that is not good when somebody expects you to lose over 100 games. Now, if you meet your expectation and you lose 100 games, you're still a bad team. And I think that's, that's kind of bad. But Oakland has always, and I think for the next few years, will continue to have the greatest disadvantage that you can have in baseball. They have the lowest attendance of their, I mean, the average attendance is the lowest of any team in the American League, probably in all of baseball, um, I think. I can't remember what it is for the National League. But what that means is that also that, that they have the lowest amount of revenue coming in from ticket sales. Now, you talk about some of these big-name players going for $25 million a year and, and all of this stuff. The A's, as it stands right now, and probably for years to come, will not be able to get some of these big-name players. Here's what I mean. The A's budget was expected to be about $55 million for the next few years, and that's about where it's been for the last couple of years as well, a little bit more. But um, with that being the case, so let's say they would have gotten Albert Pujols at $25 million a year for the next 10 years. All right, so... At $55 million of their total budget, they have given up almost, almost, let's not get too math, uh, math junky on me here. Almost half of their budget goes to one player. Now, you have to fig factor in there's also eight other people on the field at, at one time. You have your starting pitchers. You have your bullpen. You have your utility players sitting on the bench. All have to split $35 million. You do not have anybody on your team who is going to be good if you sign one of these big name players and baseball is not like basketball where you can have one person carry your team Albert Pujols could not carry a team like the A's so that's why you never hear that they're in the mix because they don't have the money to do it and it's not like basketball or football where there's better revenue sharing um, you know anything like that so that being said the A's know that the gap between them and all the other teams is getting larger and larger that they are getting, uh, or they're, you know, coming to be at a disadvantage, greater than the year, than they were the year before, over and over and over again, and that is a tough thing. I cannot imagine what it would be like as a player knowing that you're expected to lose. I mean, I've been on some teams that have not been great. You know, we knew that we were not going to succeed, but we didn't believe that we were going to be terrible. So. As I've been seeing what A the A's have been doing, you know, getting rid of some of these players here, I can't help but be excited for them. Because these are the same people who have been a part of the A's lineup, been part of the A's pitching staff, and have really been the ones who have propelled us to, to the victories that we've had. For example, Trevor Cahill gets traded to the Diamondbacks. So, tough to see him go. Gio Gonzalez getting traded to the Nationals. Andrew Bailey getting traded to the Red Sox, replacing Papelbon as the closing pitcher. Uh, Ryan Sweeney is going with him, too. Now, the thing that has really helped the A's and has saved them from being the laughing stock in the past has been their pitching staff, these three pitchers. I can tell you that when I saw at, you know, Andrew Bailey come in in the ninth inning, I had the feeling that everything was going to be okay. The we were going to get out of this mess. Or this game is in the bag. We've got another one to our name. Now with a lot of the pitchers that are there right now, I can't necessarily say I have the confidence. I can definitely say they don't have the talent, that's for sure, because these three guys, they're all-star pitchers. And what they went for, I think, 
and what the A's got in return was definitely uh, what they were worth. So I wish him the best. I really do. I'm excited to see Bailey, though, as a Red Sox. Um, I know he's excited about it. One of the things he said is that he would be lying if he didn't say that he was excited about it. And it makes sense because kind of going back to it, I mean, you're Andrew Bailey. I mean, you see, uh, you see Cahill, you see Gonzalez going, and you're already hearing that you're going to be one of the worst teams in baseball, you know, or the worst team in baseball. And then you get traded to the Red Sox, who's expected to be able to uh, win the AL East, potentially going to the World Series, or at least a team where you've got people coming and supporting you day in and day out. You know, he's from New Jersey, too, you know, so he's, he's familiar with the Red Sox. I think everybody's familiar with the Red Sox. So, mad props to these guys. I think they definitely deserve it. But going back to Oakland, it gets even worse than that. I mean, not only have we lost our pitching, but we've lost our infield. David DeJesus gets signed by the Cubs. Josh Willingham signed by the Twins. Coco Crisp will not be coming back more than likely. So here we are without our best pitchers, without our starting outfielders. And it's going to be tough the rest of the way. I really don't think I can put into perspective how tough it's going to be to be an athletics fan for the next few years. I think there's hope in the future. Billy Bean says there's a plan, and I believe that they have a plan in place. Uh, one of the things they're looking to do is to move to San Jose. Earlier this week, there was a lot of uh, information going around saying that um, by February, the Athletics would be given the permission to move to San Jose. So the San Jose A's would be a very, very different than Oakland if the plan that Billy Bean has for them would kind of go into place. Now, the whole move to San Jose is still up in the air right now, and it has been so long that this has been going on that the move to San Jose or the move to anywhere really um, you know, has been talked about. When we go back to March 2009, Bud Selig puts together a committee to study what the team kind of wants to put together for a move to another uh, new, another location. Nothing has come back from that yet. It's going to be almost three years here in you know just about three months. That's a long time to wait. And the A's have definitely been struggling during that time. The move to San Jose I think would be great. They have to build a new stadium. That's going to generate a lot of excitement. You've got new fans. You've got a new team in an area. I think that that's something that will not necessarily bring them to the same kind of level you know, that you get for some of the larger market teams like you know, any Los Angeles team or a New York team or Chicago or Boston, nowhere near that. But they're going to have a significant uh, or significantly larger budget, I would say, than what they have right now. And that's something that with the experience that they have generated so far and being able to develop some of their talent I think will propel them to success. But there's also some cause for concerns. I mean, I'm not going to be taking what Billy Bean says and figure that that is exactly what is going to happen. You know, if you build a plan and you expect that this is going to happen and this is exactly how it's going to happen, you are destined to fail. You need to change your plan as things happen and your plan needs to be able to change as you know, other variables change as well. So one of the things that I'm concerned about and by the way, I have no idea what I am doing right here because I was going to slide home and just see the tag, but apparently I end up going back to third, get caught in the pickle, come back home. I slide, though, and I get the run. So I guess that's all right. Not too bad, right? Anyway, one of the things that Oakland has had an opportunity to be able to do for the last few years is to be able to draft and draft well. When you have a team that does not do too well uh, during you know, the season, they kind of compensate them a little bit. I think that's really the only way that you can put it by, by allowing them to draft earlier, which means that when you have an earlier draft pick, you can find a better player. But Oakland really hasn't done too well of being able to draft their picks. In fact, I think it's been kind of embarrassing what they have been doing uh, during the draft. Now, part of what's been going on, Billy Bean says, is because of the amount of money that he has been given uh, you know, for the draft, which... Uh, last year was $3 million, and that's where it's been for the last few years as well. But he expects next season to have $10 million for the draft. So maybe we'll be seeing some better players coming out of Oakland here as part of that draft. But going back from that to Oakland, I've, I've been talking about Oakland developing players, but it's really the pitchers that they've been able to develop really well. Cahill, Gonzalez, Bailey, you know, all have come through Oakland. Uh, you know, their abilities to pitch, 
and the success that they've had has been because of what Oakland has taught them. But when you take a look at the hitters that have come out of Oakland, there really is not anybody that I would say we could get excited about. The one person that I think that has been the best batter to come out of Oakland here in the last few years is Cliff Pennington. And a lot of you are probably scratching your head saying, who is Cliff Pennington? Exactly. You know, of course, uh, we're not going to be getting an Albert Pujols anytime soon here and develop him, nor are we going to get anybody else that I think is going to be of major significance. But there is hope. The players that the Washington Nationals gave up for Gio Gonzalez are really good. And I think that for some of the other players that we've gotten as well from the various teams, they are going to be very good if we can develop them right. I mean, just Gio, Gio Gonzalez, just going back to that here real quick, the four players that we got from Washington for Gio are four of the ten best prospects in the Washington Nationals organization. So Washington also not having that much success uh, you know, a few years ago, they drafted these guys pretty high. So they are going to be good. Um, and I think that you know, they'll be ready in time for the time that we move. That's what Billy Bean is wanting to do. By the time that they move, which is around 2014 to 2015, that's something that you know, he wants to kind of have everything ready by. He's trying to emulate what happened in 1994 with the Cleveland Indians when they made the move to their new stadium. They did a phenomenal job. It was uh, what a lot of people have said had been the best season by anybody who has moved to a new stadium. So if he can do that, awesome. I mean, this guy is obviously good um, You know what he does. you got to admit, Billy Bean has revolutionized baseball. And you know, during the time that people were starting to figure out what Billy Bean was doing, he put together some good teams, and everybody figures out what he's doing, and then they start doing it too. I mean, then we're back at square one here, but we'll take a look and, and you know, we'll see what happens. I'm going to stay being an Oakland A's fan. It's tough watching your team lose time in and time out, but to be able to stay with the team I think means something. People who call themselves Oakland A's fans now and call themselves uh, you know, fans of the athletics down the road wherever they move to, I think are going to be some of the best baseball fans ever. I mean, the only team that I can kind of think understands what we're going through right now is the Pirates. Pirate fans are absolutely loyal. I respect them because they have had some rough times lately too, and they have stuck with their team. So, you know, I think uh, I can feel for a Pirates fan, and I think a Pirates fan can understand what I'm going through right now too. But uh, if things work out the way that Billy Bean is saying that it will, and I think that it has the potential to do that. I think we're talking about one of the greatest stories in the history of modern baseball. A team that, I'm okay saying this, is the laughing stock of baseball going to a team that may contend in the AL West in the future. You know, four or five years down the road from now, I think the AL West is going to look a lot different than it does right now. Um, I think the Mariners are going to make some, some good moves. Albert Pujols at that point, I don't think will be the same kind of player that he is now. Granted, he is still going to be good, but he's not going to be the Albert Pujols that we know. Uh, maybe he'll be relegated to a designated hitter position. And, I, you know, kind of going back here, too, to, you know, with A-Rod, I think it's kind of the same thing. I don't think he's going to like it at all. Um, but the Angels are stuck with him. they got to do something for the amount of money that they're paying him for. Uh, Rangers, we'll see how long they'll be able to hold what they have right now. I mean, they've done a great job being able to pick people up, um, you know, for... Some good contracts. We'll see what happens with you, Darvish, as well. But I can see that in a few years, the A's can contend in the AL West and may reach to the uh, reach the playoffs here. Um, you know, about five years or more from now, and it's not going to be easy. Uh, I will be the first to admit that. I know it's going to be tough, and I'm still going to wear my A's hats proudly, though, because I, I think that going for the little guy, and when the little guy pulls through. Make some of the best moments. I mean, think about it. If you you expect your team to win the World Series all the time, and they do, your team's met your expectations. I think if a team can exceed your expectations, that's really where true sports magic comes from, and that brings about some of the greatest moments, I think, in all of sports. When you kind of take a look at it, it's people exceeding the expectations that were set for them. So, anyway, whew, off, that, uh, off of that little box there. Anyway, the game's about ready to end here, but I did want to ask you guys a little bit of a favor here because I want to make... Um, let's talk baseball, something a little bit bigger than just me playing a video game and talking about baseball. So 
I know I kind of say subscribe if you haven't already. Feel free to follow me on Twitter, Facebook. You guys know the drill. But if you guys could also favorite this video as well, that would help me out quite a bit. And also share this with your friends. I mean, if you guys would just take the time to put this in your Facebook status, to, to send it on Twitter or something like that, so people know that this is out there. Uh, I cannot thank you enough. Uh, there'll be some awesome things coming up. LTP Fear will be joining me on the next episode for Let's Talk Baseball. He's a fellow Machinima Sports Director. He's a baseball player too, so he's going to bring some great insight to uh, the discussion here about baseball, what's going on. And there's a lot of cool uh, baseball events ahead, Hall of Fame voting, stuff like that. So keep watching. Uh, please do. And as always, you guys know what I'm going to say here. I hope you guys.